Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can use templating in your server-side Swift apps using Perfect and Mustache. First of all, what is templating? Well, often when you're developing a web app, you want to return data like JSON or HTML, except certain parts of that data you want replaced with dynamic content. For example, imagine you're trying to return a web page, and in a certain part of the page, you want to say hi and the user's name. Templating is the idea that you make a template of what you want to return, except in that spot that you want dynamic data, you would put something like name surrounded by curly braces. Then you would instruct your web framework to render that template and you would pass in a name set to a certain value and it would make that replacement for you. In this screencast, we're going to explore templating with a popular server-side Swift framework called Perfect. Perfect comes with built-in support for an extremely popular templating system called Mustache, which has implementations for just about every language out there. This tutorial has been sponsored by Perfectly Soft, so huge thanks for sponsoring, and let's dive in and start creating our first Hello World template. I've already got the Swift 3 toolchain and Perfect Assistant installed, so I'll create a new project in Perfect Assistant using the Perfect Template app template. I'll browse to a directory to store this project in and create a new directory called Hello Templating. I'll uncheck Integrate Linux Build to save compile time, and I'll click Save. Perfect Assistant will set up a Hello Perfect project for me. Before I open the project, I need to do two configuration things. First, I need to create a directory for the templates to be stored in, so I'll click Open Project Directory and I'll create a new directory called WebRoot. Second, I need to import the mustache library itself. To do this, I'll just drag the entry for mustache from the utility section up to the dependencies and click Save Changes. This will auto-regenerate the Xcode project, so at this point I can just click Open Xcode Project. Before I forget, I'll select the second target and go to Edit Scheme and set the working directory to the Hello Templating directory. Now let's create our first mustache template. Inside WebRoot, I'll create a file named hello.mustache. Let's start by returning some basic HTML without any parameters to replace. We'll do that later. Note that you can return anything here. It doesn't necessarily need to be HTML. Also, to get syntax highlighting, just select Editor, Syntax Coloring, HTML. OK, now let's set up a route in Perfect that will return this template. To do this, I'll delete all of this placeholder code and start up a simple server listening on port 8080 with the document root set. I'll also set up a function to re render the template, which we'll fill in in a moment, and a route that we'll call it. Finally, I'll set up the server and print any errors. In Perfect, to use Mustache, you need to create a type that implements the Mustache Page Handler protocol. The job of this type is to generate the data that will be used to fill in the Mustache template. We're going to create a simple implementation here that just lets the caller pass in the data directly. So we'll add a property to store the data that we'll pass to the template to render, for now, it will be empty, but later in the screencast, we'll be adding values into here. Note that mustache evaluation context.map type is just a string to any dictionary. The method I need to overwrite is called extend values for response. It will be easy in our case. I'll just pass in the values property to the context via the extend values method. Then I'll try to complete the request, and if there's an error, I'll log it out. Now that I have this helper, implementing hello mustache will be easy. I'll just create an empty map type, and I'll call a built-in perfect method called mustache request, passing in the request, the response, and the mustache helper we made earlier, passing in our empty dictionary. Finally, for the template path, I'll pass in the path to the hello mustache template we made earlier. Build and run and check it out. We've got HTML. Even though this is very basic, we've already got some benefit because now our template is in a different file, which is a lot cleaner and more maintainable than returning it all in our handler. But the real power of templating comes with filling it in with dynamic data. So let's give that a try. Instead of saying hello world, I want this page to say hello and then the user's name. To do this, I simply add a placeholder where I want the user's name. Two opening curly braces, name, and two closing curly braces. Note that this kind of looks like a mustache. That's how it got its name. Back in main.swift, all I have to do is add an entry for name into the values dictionary. I'll set it to my name here. I'll build and run, and awesome, I have dynamic data. In the first perfect screencast, I showed you how you can take routes that take parameters. Let's combine that idea with templating so you can get the user's name from the route that you visit. I'll create a new route here that takes a parameter called name and calls hello mustache2. Inside hello mustache2, I'll look up the name from the URL variables dictionary. And if it isn't there, I'll return an error. 
Otherwise, I'll just pass that name into the values dictionary and render the template as before. Build and run, and let's try this with a dynamic name. It works. Replacing placeholders for single values in your template is great, but often you have a collection of items that you want to render. For example, on a blog, you might have a collection of posts, or on Twitter, you might have a collection of tweets. Mustache also supports looping through a collection of data through a concept called sections. Let's see how that works. I'll create a new template here called hello2.mustache and copy in the same HTML from earlier. Except this time, let's assume we're passed in a collection of users, and for each one, we want to print out their name. To do this, I'll put users inside curly braces, but prefixed by a hashtag to indicate this is a section. To close the section, I'll put users inside curly braces again, but prefixed by a slash to indicate that this section is complete. Inside the section, I can refer to any property that all users contain. Our users will contain a name property to start, so I'll print that out. Back in main.swift, I'll add a new route for hello mustache 3. This time, instead of passing in a single value, we pass in a dictionary. For each user, I'll add an entry for their name. I'll build and run, and nice, I see a collection of users. Usually when you have a collection of data like this, each element has more than one property. For example, a user might have a name and an email address. To show you what I mean, I'll create a new route here that has users with both names and email addresses. I'll create a new template to display this based on the previous template. It's the same as before, except now we're looking for both the name key and the email key inside the dictionary for each user. Build and run, and nice, we've got a dynamic collection of data. There's one last thing I want to show you before I go on. Sometimes you want something different to appear if you don't have any data at all in your section. For example, if there are zero users. This is really easy. You just put the name of the section in curly braces as before, except you use a caret to indicate that this should be displayed if there are no users. We can test this out by creating a new route and just not passing in any users this time. If I build and run, nice, I see it display that there are no users. Often when you're creating templates, you have a lot of repeated elements. For example, all of the pages we have so far have the same bits at the beginning of the HTML document and at the end of the HTML document. And it would be absolutely terrible if our designer came in and said, hey, I've made all these changes and we have to go and update a thousand different pages. As with programming, a general rule is don't repeat yourself. And luckily, mustache makes this easy through the concept of partials. Take a look at our three mustache templates here. They all begin the exact same way and end the exact same way. The only difference is the body of the page. It would be great to put each of these sections into reusable files. And with mustache, it's easy. I'll just copy the header material and move it to a new file called header.mustache. Similarly, I'll copy the footer material and move it to a new file called footer.mustache. Then, in each of these files, I'll simply put the name of the file I want to import inside curly braces, but prefixed by a greater than sign to signify that it is a partial. Now I'll build and run, and nice. Everything works as before, but our templates are much cleaner. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to create and use a template, replace placeholders, loop through collections of data, and even reuse templates. Now that you understand templating, I'm sure you're eager to actually fill in templates with dynamic data from a database. And persistence is the topic of my next screencast. Thanks for watching. I wish I could stay, but I really must dash. I'm out.